you can tell a lot about, the per about a person, about the clothes they have in their closet. You can tell how they like to dress, what they like, maybe their favorite color. But you can also tell a lot about a place, about the clothes you find on the people that are there. Let me give you an example. In Hawaii, people don't own many jackets. You wouldn't see someone walking around in a big parka. Instead, if you were to look in their closet, you might find a lot of short sleeve shirts or a lot of short pants, right? A lot of Hawaiian shirts. Whereas if you went to Alaska, well, you might find a few crazy people wearing shorts, but mostly they're going to have long pants and they have big parkas. And here in Oregon, if you were to look in the closet of an, someone in Sandy, you'd find a lot of different clothes. You might find shorts and a variety. Well, the clothes someone has in their closet not only shows a lot about them, but it shows a lot about the place. And in this video, we're going to look how these clothes can help tell us a lot about something called climate. Well, in this video, we're going to be doing three things, right? We're going to be, one, discussing this guy named Ellsworth Huntington and his research into climate and how it worked with people. We're also going to define exactly what climate is, and then we're going to compare a little bit of climate and weather. How are they the same and how are they different? All right, so remember to write that down in your Cornell note sheet under those big ideas, and it'll help you take notes throughout this video. Well, let's start looking at this guy named Ellsworth Huntington. Ellsworth, he was a professor at Yale right around the 1900s, right around the turn of the century to the 20th century. Um, he was a geographer, right? He was one of those social study guys, not one of the really cool scientists like us, but we won't hold that against him. So he was a geographer and was really interested in what made some cultures thrive and you know, take over the world and be these massive civilizations, and what made other cultures be really small and insignificant. Well, maybe not insignificant, but not the major global player like an Egypt or Greece or Rome. Why are they different? And so he reached out and he had an hypothesis. He said it was the climate of the places that he found. And so he traveled around the world and he took detailed measurements. He measured the temperature, he measured what the weather was like, how many seasons they had, whether they had four true seasons or maybe just a winter and a summer. He wanted to find out how much rain they had and he put all that together and then showed the culture that went there. And so he had an idea and looking at his data, he said that the ideal temperature and place for any human being was a place that had seasons. It had all four seasons. So it had a winter, a spring, a summer, and it had a fall. It also had seasonal rain, that in the spring and winter there was more rain than in the fall and summer. And it had an average temperature for the entire year of 64 degrees. Well, to give you an idea, Sandy's temperature was 51 degrees. So 64, that's kind of like Washington, D.C.'s culture. Uh, sorry. Washington DC's climate temperature. So when you're thinking of a, a temperature that is perfect or a climate that's perfect for human beings, eh, it's about Washington DC. Well, this idea of climate, what is it and how does it affect and exactly what was Ellsworth Huntington measuring? Well, he didn't know it, but what he was actually telling us was finding out that cl climate plays a huge role in human beings. And we hear climate all the time in the news, right? You might hear climate when they talk about global warming and climate change. Sometimes they blame it anything from stronger hurricanes to more fires. Sometimes they even say that it's going to increase jellyfish attacks, that climate affects us all the time. Well, for this class and for the rest of the videos, we're going to define climate as the average weather for an area over a given amount of time. Usually it's a year. So we're going to look at the average weather over an entire year. Right? There's a difference between climate and weather. Right? Now, obviously, the definition of climate has something to do with weather. We used it in the definition. Weather, we're going to say in our class, is the what's happening in the atmosphere. So the weather, the rain, the clouds, the temperature, the winds, the air pressure, the humidity, all the things we're going to study in weather at a very specific time. Right? You watch the weather report, and it's very for a day or an hour. Sometimes they even break it down, saying quickly they can tell you what the weather is going to be. That's very different than climate. Climate is an average of all those together. I like to think of weather as a specific grade on an assignment. Right? If you're going to look at and draw an analogy, where weather is what you get on, a, on an exact 
grade on an assignment, where climate is the weather over your entire grade, right? So it is every single assignment averaged together gives you a grade. That's climate and weather, right? Also, another way, if we were going back to our analogy at the beginning of this video, climate, or weather, excuse me, is the clothes that you're wearing right now. You and I, we dress for the weather. We put on clothes to make sure that if it's hot out, we dress cool. If it's cold out, we put on warm clothes. Whereas climate is the type of clothes we have in our closet. Right? If you live in a really cold place, you don't have a lot of shorts because the climate tells us we don't want shorts. Or vice versa, right? If you live in a warm, really warm place, the climate tells us having a jacket and having big heavy coats and winter boots isn't gonna be helpful. The difference here is that weather is what's happening very quickly and climate is much more longer range and is the average of them. Now, Ellsworth Huntington, he was looking at individual cultures and looking at, at that average temperatures and average weather to come up with an idea of what was perfect. Now, since then, his ideas have been totally debunked and there's some other things that happen. If you're interested, there's a really great book on this called Guns, Germs, and Steel, but maybe not. It's a little high-end, I guess, for middle schoolers. So let's look at back what we talked about in this video. One, we discussed Ellsworth Huntington's research into what is the perfect place for human beings to grow and develop. We came up with a definition of climate, that is the average weather for a specific place over a very large amount of time, usually at least a year. And then we compared how climate and weather are different and the same. That climate is the average weather, but weather is the individual, very specific events that happen. So let me remind you how these videos work. Remember, if I went too fast, you can always hit pause and rewind and listen to it again. Or you can just rewatch it again if you need to get more details. But always remember to keep moving forward.